Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Since we're in the middle of gift giving season, I thought it was a good time to uh, sew a quilted gift bag. Uh, this is beneficial in a, several different ways. One, it won't end up in the trash uh, after it's used. Uh, and even though some gift bags don't get recycled as gift bags again, uh, a lot of them don't. And it will be something the recipient uses for other functions uh, and purposes after they receive their gift. And secondly, you can make it the size you need. I can't tell you how often I've gone to try to buy a gift bag and I can't find the size I need and I end up buying something way too big just to fit something in it. So today I'm going to show you how to figure out uh, how big of a piece of fabric to cut and quilt in order to make the right size bag. And these formulas I'll put on the screen and I'll put in in the description box too. Okay, I just picked this up out of my sewing room. It is purse hardware and all sorts of other stuff. And I thought, let's pretend we're giving this as a gift. And we want to know what size bag we're going to need to put it in. Well, I need to take three measurements. First of all, I want to measure the width. And I want to come up with a width that's big enough to handle it. And so I'm going to say my width is 10 inches. I might even go with 11 let me I'm gonna say my width is 11, the width of the bag I need. We need our height. I'm gonna go with eight, because this is about seven inches, so I'm gonna go with eight. So my height is eight. Then I need my depth, which is how deep you want your bag. And I'm going to go with seven on this because this is right at six inches. That gives me a little bit of, of leeway. So you need those three measurements in order to make your bag. And what we're gonna do is cut out an outside and a lining, have a piece of batting, same size two, and quilt it up. Now to figure out what size this needs to be, Let's see if I can hold this steady and that you can read it. Here's the height of our bag, the width, and the depth. So we want to cut a piece of fabric that is two times the height, so twice this, plus the depth. Okay? And then we want to add one inch for seam allowance and for quilt. Quilting always shrinks your your fabric. And then to get how wide we want it, we want to add our, wet, our width plus our depth and add one inch again for uh, seam allowances and the shrinkage of quilting. Then I'm going to need two strips of fabric that are uh, I mean, I'm sorry, one strip of fabric that's two inches wide, and we want it twice the width plus the depth, and then another extra inch for your seam allowances. Then we're gonna need two handles, and I'm just uh, gonna make mine two and a half inches by 15 inches. That's long enough for uh, most bags, and if you don't need that much, you can just cut it off. So that's just, that's just kind of a general rounded number. So if you have these three dimensions and this formula, you'll know how big to cut yours. Okay, let's see if I cut mine right. I want two times the height plus the depth. Well, my height was eight inches. So two times that is 16 plus my depth is seven. And that's 23 inches, and I did. I have a 23 inch piece. And then I need to add one inch extra, and I forgot to do that on mine. 
So mine, my handle may stick out of my bag, but uh, so it might be just a little bit short. Um, then we need for our width of our fabric, and mine I believe is 18 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I need the width plus the depth. Well, my width is 11 and my depth is seven and that is 18. And again, I didn't add my extra inch. So I'll make sure I take tiny seam allowances. And um, so I'll, my package will fit in there. Okay, don't do what I do, did. Add your one inch. So here's the piece of fabric. Now, once again, I have a uh, directional print. I didn't realize I owned so many directional prints, but I do. And I think it's because the majority of my stash was used for uh, making clothes and a lot of times children's clothes and a lot of them are directional. So it's really better to not use a directional print because one side of the bag is going to be upside down. That's okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is after we've quilted it, and you can quilt it any way you want, I just did a simple diagonal quilting on mine. We're gonna fold it in half with, and this is my front, so with right sides together, and I'm going to take a quarter inch seam down both sides. So let's do that real quick. Now that I've got my two seams, this is my top, this is the bottom, we need to cut a square out of this corner. And to compute how big a square you want to take, and you want to measure this from your seam. So you wanna do your seam first, but we wanna cut out a square that's the half is half of our depth. So my depth was seven, so I want a three and a half inch square cut out of this. And I'm gonna measure that three and a half inches from the seam, not from the edge. So here's three and a half, and I'm gonna put that right on that seam, and then three and a half here. So I've got three and a half on this, and three and a half with that seam. Okay, let's do the same thing on this other side. Three and a half right on my seam allowance and three and a half on the fold. Now let's cut that out. And you could do this without using quilted fabric, but um, the quilted will make it hold its shape so much better. Now then, we're going to, with it inside out, fold it like this and take a quarter inch seam there and a quarter inch seam over here. So let's go do that. leave your edges raw like this but if you want to you can also take uh, another strip of fabric of the, that's for the handle so I'm gonna get a strip here and it only needs to be 
well. It doesn't need to be very wide. Probably about an inch and a quarter or so. Maybe an inch, so. And this is just optional if you want the inside of your bag to look as nice as the outside. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the machine with right sides together. I'm going to stitch it there. Then I'll wrap it around and fold it under and we'll stitch it again. But I'll bring it over here and iron it before we stitch it the second time. I'm going to do that on both side seams and across the bottom seam. I've stitched my seams, I mean one on one side of my seam with about a one inch piece of fabric. And then I'm gonna fold this in halfway. And you'll notice on the ends, not at the top I didn't, but the ends I folded it up too so it would have a smooth seam on the outside. Then I'm going to wrap this around and top stitch it right on top of that seam. That way our seam will not show. I'm going to do that with all three, I mean all four, can't count, of my seams. Again this is optional but it'll make your bag look as good on the inside as it does on the uh, outside. And I used about a one inch strip of fabric. And I'll add this to the dimensions too that I put in the how to figure out how much of it you need. Okay, I'm going to take it over the machine and stitch down all four sides. I think I ironed them all. Yes, okay. Now we have covered all of our seams. We can turn our bag right side out. Cut off a... Let's see if this is going to work before I finish it. It is. And like I said, my handle's going to stick out because I didn't add the extra an inch. But that's okay. I probably should have figured a, a bag bigger than that. Now then, we're going to go around the top. And I'm going to start over here at the side seam. And give it a little extra here. And... I, I cut my piece a lot longer than I needed. I'm going to go all the way around, and then we will fold it over 
and stitch it again just like we did on our side seams. Now what I'm going to do when I get here, see I'm going to turn back the bottom one and then lay this on top of it and go until my seams meet. I've got some extra here. That I can just cut off. Now we'll turn that up, we'll iron it real good, And just like we did before, I'm going to turn it halfway and then turn it over. And this time I'm going to use some clips to hold it in place as I go around the edge, the top edge. I'm going to go over to the machine and stitch that down. Okay, we have our basket or our bag done, but before I put the handle, I mean it's not done, doesn't have the handles, but before I put the handles on it, I'm going to steam it real good, and I'm going to steam these sides. And I'm going to take them over to the machine and top stitch them so they hold their shape real good. I want to steam my binding across the top. Okay, I'm going to go stitch four seams just to help it hold its shape. I'm just making about an eighth of an inch seam here.
Now, can you see how well this is holding its shape just by stitching those sides? I'm gonna put my handles on in a minute, but one more time, I'm gonna check. And yes, it'll fit in there perfectly. Now, if I'd been using my head, I would have made the gift bag quite a bit, like maybe six inches taller than it needed to be, so it would hide the gift down in there. But I wasn't using my head. I was just thinking about getting the exact measurements for this. So I would add, for your height, I would add some extra inches if you don't want people seeing the gift you're giving them. Now, all we have left is our handles. And we're gonna do this just like we do purse handles or bias tape or any of that. I'm gonna fold this in half. Then I'm gonna open it back up and fold both sides to that middle crease. Now this is much longer than I need. As a matter of fact, it's good enough for two. So I'm just going to, well, no, I, I may want it really long, so I'm gonna go ahead and make two of them. Since it's so wide, Okay, let's decide how long we want. I think I'm going to want to put it like when I'll find the middle and then halfway on both sides. So the middle right here. Then Here's halfway between that, and that measures two and a half inches. Take the middle one out now. And I'm going to stitch this on both sides on the machine and I'm going to turn under a little bit. Put it about two inches down to start it so that I have enough. Uh, if something's heavy in there, you want it to support it better. And then I might even make it a little longer than that. Okay. You just have to, you're going to have to determine how long you want your handles um, yourself. Uh, let's see, how long was this? Okay, this is about 18 inches long, so I should probably have you make, instead of 15 inch long ones, 18 inch. Um, so I'll change that in my instructions. Okay, I'm going to uh, go sew these up, then I'll turn it under and sew them on each side and we'll be done with our bag.
Okay, we are through with our bag. On the inside, our seams look really good. They're covered. If I get all the threads out of the way, it's holding its shape nice and neatly. And you can even stitch around the bottom like I did on the sides if you want. It is the perfect size for what I intended. Now, granted, I should have added some extra to hide the gift, but it did turn out the size I measured it to be. So the formulas work. You just have to remember to, um, to add extra if you want extra room in your bag. And the purpose, the whole purpose of this video was mainly to show you how to compute what size bag that you needed and how to just stitch up a basic bag. The optional parts are covering your seams on the inside. See that? You can't even tell that there's a seam there when they're covered like that. That's optional. How long you make your straps is optional or how wide. You could make your straps wider than mine. You could also put a big make a big bow put on it. You could use some extra fabric like we do with tissue paper. Let me see here. See, I've got a piece of fabric here. If you were gonna do that, I would cut it all the way around the edge with pinking shears. But after you put your gift in there, you could use this just like you would tissue paper. And this is the gift that keeps on giving them. People will use this bag for all sorts of stuff. If I was gifted this bag, you know what I would use it for? I would put fabric in it. I bet it would hold bolts, my little bolts of fabric just really, really well. Let's have to stand them up like that. But it can be used for all sorts of different things. So I just want to make sure that you have the uh, formulas you need to make a bag the size you want to make it. And I will put all of this in the description, even with the changes I made as we went. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this was beneficial to you. And um, I hope you'll join me next time. So remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.